So this is the STD from Animodule, the syncopated timing disruptor. It's two tap tempo clocks where the yellow button allows us to tap in a tempo. We can link channels with the red button, which will link the output of this clock to the second. These work as offsets to divide to the left and multiply to the right. So let's multiply. Notice that they're straight multiplications, one, two, three, four. This isn't a rate control, that comes from the tap button. We can unsync these and tap in different time. Completely unsynced clocks. We have a clock input, which is the tap or the link or an actual input, a CV and an output per channel, and then an OR and an XOR logic gate. An OR gate will be high when either one of the clocks or both is high. An AND gate will be high when both of the outputs are high together. This will give us an output. And the XOR is high when one or the other clock is high, but not when both are high together. That may seem baffling. I'll put some graphics up on screen to show the AND, OR and XOR logic. But whether you want to get into this or not, it's just really fun. Patch into the logic blindly, play around, ignore working out what it does if you want. You will get some results and these will be dependent on their input, which in this case is the actual two clocks. Let's sync these back up. So we've got the kick and the hi-hat. You can hear they're in sync. Let's just play around with the logic outputs and see what we get. So I'll move the hi-hat to R. Now because these are overlapping, it gives us a kind of shuffle driven. This is what they sound like not out of the logic. A triplet or a times three and a straight clock on top. Here's the and. Those first two hits of that hi hat are during the phase of this clock that's high. So it just hits those two and XR. Bit more of an interesting rhythm as these actually overlap into each other, the XR will cut that off. Changing the multiplication now. You can think of this as 16s against quarter notes if you want. Again, the R logic giving us a different rhythm and, and XR. Let's grab some cables and use the CV ins. I've got a completely unsynced sample and hold. Let's go into the CV. into the top CV as well, which will influence this one. So although this is just random CV, you could hear this would be perfect for CV and in some ratchets for hi-hats or more Berlin school style synth sequencing. Let's take the hat into that XR, kick into, let's say the AND. So the CV attenuators may be a little bit high. Don't want those kind of mad sub audio, almost audio rate bursts. But you can hear they're all related and syncable rhythms. Taking the CV out, let's go back to just being the clocks. Let's unsync them. Start with a kick, tap in a new tempo. not touch the end of this cable, which is triggering my hats. Let's tap in a new rhythm. Uh, try and be completely out of sync with this. On 
and sync them. So these are just unsynced. You can hear they're drifting against each other. Now they're unsynced, this top one doesn't affect the second. Let's go into the logic, see what rhythms we can get. So two unsynced clocks, but we're getting relatable and sort of influenced rhythms from these two clocks. Let's CV both dividers and multipliers again. Or we can sync these back up. So it's great for, as it says, syncopated timing disruption. Syncable musical divisions and multiplications. It's great for sequences, for resetting modulation, for triggering drums, or opening up VCAs and triggering envelopes for bits of melodic work as well. Let's have a bit of fun with some chord voices. I'm going to tap in a clock to the top of the module. This output is clocking my delay, which you'll hear as sounds get going. Uh, and to start with, let's link the two channels. We can see both clocks are exactly the same. And I've got four different sounds, four different pitches from four different oscillators, creating a bit of a chord tone. And let's start to hear them. Let's take the clock from the second output. And let's just listen to the clock from the first as well. We can obviously offset the division or multiplication. Let's take the logic output. That's the R, let's take XR. Let's go to AND. And if we start to CV this, first I'm going to clock the first input. Let's CV the timing of the first clock. As this top clock is moving around, because we've got the CV and the attenuator up, this will actually pass its output to clock the second. So we can see the red LED showing the clock is mirroring the top. Now let's CV the bottom channel as well. get lots of nice musical divisions and multiplications playing these different chord tones. Let's slow this one down. And let's actually unlink it and tap in a new tempo. Now because these are unrelated, I've just tapped in some random values, just whatever I felt like tapping we'll get lots of overlap and that logic's going to provide some different rhythms that sound different to the two clocks. So even with two completely unsynced, unrelated clocks, you can hear we're still getting some interaction. Instead of the clock, let's take that third logic output. Speed up the top clock. Because the envelopes I'm using in this patch have a sustain period, they're all ADSRs, you can hear some longer notes and shorter notes in that logic as the two clocks overlap. The logic output on the R, for example, will merge into one long high value until they drop off. And as these are being CV'd by random sources, the CV on both of these is just stepped random at the same rate as this clock. This is going to feel like it keeps evolving. A 
little bit of an obscure patch, but this is modular, so why not? Um, the two clocks are triggering two different versions of the same sequence. One string sound with reverb on, one without. And then using the AND output to cycle through these mixer, mixer inputs, which is nothing in one, and then three different waveforms from the same oscillator, which is creating that little drone in the background. Obviously really repetitive, but let's play around with the clocks. Let's start to CV these clocks and their divisions. And CV the second one as well. So by messing around and disrupting, as the name would suggest, the timing, this simple repetitive four step sequence, the two layers for the melody and the drone cutting in and out becomes much more interesting. These are just a couple of examples of how you might actually influence sequences, modulation, bits of things controlling pitch, anything that takes a gate or a clock or a trigger such as the drum module. These are just a couple of ways to start to look at how this could disrupt, control, musical or unmusical I guess without a sync clocks but you could play with some nice phasing clocks that would then interact in this logic for an even more interactive musical way of merging unsync sources. It's a great little fun module for any other logic or timing or clock sources as well. So that's the STD Syncopated Timing Disruptor from Animodule. Thanks for watching.